Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and an awesome and amazing day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to give him the things right now. Another day to give him the praise right now. Another day to give him the glory right now. Another day to always magnify and shout out his holy name right now. Another day, my brothers and my sisters right now, for us continue to pick up our crosses and follow Jesus right now. No matter what it looked like, no matter what it seemed like, pick up your crosses and continue to follow Jesus. Continue to seek him no matter what. Continue to praise him. Continue to worship him. Continue to magnify and exalt his holy name because he is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. Today is the day, glory, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. And I am so glad. I say I am so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. I don't know about you. I'm nothing without Jesus. I can't even move. I can't even operate. I can't even malfunction myself without him. But when I have him, good God Almighty, I can do all things through Christ that give me strength because I need Jesus. I say I need Jesus every day of my life. Not some days, not half a day, not every other day, but I need Jesus every single day. Glory or hallelujah in my life. Praise is an everyday thing. Yes, it is. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It's not a vacation or take a break thing. It is an everyday thing because the God we serve, the God we honor, the God we magnify each and every day. Glory, hallelujah. He is still on the throne and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. Yes, he is. He is still in the blessing business. Yes, he is. And he is still answering prayers business. And if you're in love with Jesus, I mean really, really, truly in love with Jesus, like I'm in love with Jesus, open up your mouth right now today and let that, ro that lion roar that's living inside of you. I said, let that lion roar that is living inside of you right now today. Glory, hallelujah. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for this day. We magnify your name for this day. We give you the praise right now today, God. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. We thank you. And I'm in love. And I'm in love. And I'm in love with you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, come before you peacefully and humbly right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this beautiful, blessed day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this chance of a lifetime. I thank you, Father God, that you allow myself, my brothers, my sisters to come together today, Father God, in your house to fellowship together, God, to praise your name together, God, to magnify your name together, God, and also to exalt your name in your house today. Father God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved and the house that cannot be shaken. Oh, Father God, we came in for a reason today. We came in for a purpose today, God. And God, we leave in your house until we live in full and satisfied. Father God, your house is a house of prayer and praise. And God, right now today, that's what we're doing in your house. We are praying in your house right now. We're about to have service in your house. We're about to have worship in your house. We're about to have a good time in your house, God, because your word will not return back void. God, we know that you're about to show up and show out in your house. Father God, there's no place. Good God Almighty, that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but in your house, seeking you, in your house, praising you, in your house, worshiping you, God. Hallelujah. That's right. Father God, your word also tells in the book of Matthew, verses 18 and 19, where two or more gather in your name, hallelujah. Father God, you are in the midst. So, Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now, our telephones right now. Our iPad right now, our laptops, our desktops, uh, whatever gadget we have, whatever gadget we're using, we know that you're in the midst of it right now. Father God, you have your way with your sons and your daughters right now. 
And the Father God, you know exactly what we are going through, and you know exactly what we are facing. And God, we know that you're going to come through, and we know that you're going to provide. We know that you're going to make a way out of no way. Father God, we cast all our problems, all our anxieties, all our troubles on you right now today, Jesus. Because your word tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, that we should cast all our problems on you, God, because you care, God. Not nobody else, Jesus. You and only you. Whatever demonic spirit or stronghold that came against my brothers and my sisters right now today, I rebuke it right now. And I know it is terminated and destroyed and it should die by the fire of Jesus Christ right now today. Holy Spirit, I need you to intercede and intervene in this place right now. Holy Spirit, I need you to move through my brothers and my sisters right now. Holy Spirit, I need you to open my, open my brothers and my sisters' eyes right now. And let them see. Whatever it is that God wants them to see, open their ears so they can hear whatever God wants them to hear today. And I believe that this word and I believe that this message is going to talk to somebody today. It's going to light somebody today. It's going to get somebody strength today. It's going to get somebody hope today. It's going to get somebody a future from God today. Glory, hallelujah. Father God, we lift these prayers up to you right now today. Knowing God that you listen to them, knowing that you heard them, knowing that you asked them. We give you the thanks right now. We give you the praise right now. In Jesus' holy mighty name, amen and amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. I'm here right now today to repent of our sins. Yes, we messed up today. Yes, we made some mistakes today. Yes, we know we dropped the ball today. Yes, we even fell short of God's grace and mercy today. Every last one of us did it today. There's not one person on this planet called Earth can say they're perfect. There's not one person on this planet called Earth can say they never messed up. They didn't drop the ball today. Everything went well. But I'm telling you right now, I know that you're not telling the truth. That's why we got to repent of our sins. And let Jesus know what we did. Even though he know what we did. But Jesus wants us to keep it real with him. He wants to be honest with him because he always keep it real with us. He always honest, honest with us. So why can't we keep it real with him? Why can't we be honest with him when he do the same for us? So we have the Father God. I boldly come to you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Please forgive me, my sisters and my brothers, for every anything God we done wrong in the sight of your eyes today. Father God, please forgive me my sisters and my brothers for every anything God we did, that we had in our heart God that was not part of you Father God please forgive me my sisters and my brothers today for every anything God that we had in our mind God that was not part of your will today wash us clean right now today Jesus purify us through your blood right now today Jesus clean us up as white as snow right now today Jesus Heavenly Father God I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sins Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for listening to us. Thank you, Father God, for hearing us out. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' holy mighty name. Amen and amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father God, I just want to say thank you for this word. Thank you for this as a known message. Thank you for the air that we're able to breathe right now today. I just can't thank you, no, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. I just can't thank you, no, Father God, for our help and our strength. I just can't thank you, no, Father God, for your words and your promises. I just can't thank you, no, Father God, for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table. The clothes and shoes that you have put on our back. I just can't thank you, no, Father God, for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just can't thank the Father God for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now. I just can't thank the Father God because you're making a way out of no way. I just can't thank the Father God because you are a healer and you are a provider. I just can't thank the Father God because when you cry, we know that you are up to something. Father God, I just can't thank you enough, Father God, because you are a man that you should not lie, that you stand in your words, that you stand in your promises, God. I just can't thank the Father God for who you are. I just can't thank the Father God what you have done. I just can't thank the Father God what you're about to do. I just I just can't thank the Father God because you about to show up and show in that life. I just can't thank the Father God 
how you move in mouths on our behalf right now today, and we won't even see it or realize it right now. I just can't thank the Father God for our blessing. I can't thank the for our breakthrough. I can't thank the for our anointing. I can't thank the for our deliverance. I can't thank the for our double portion. I can't thank the for our more than enough. I can't thank the Father God for the open doors. I can't thank the for the door that you have closed. I can't thank the for the new opportunity. I can't thank the for the connection. I can't thank the for the resource. I can't thank the for the help. I can't thank the for the rain. I just can't thank the Father God for the harvest. I just can't thank the Father God that you about to open the floodgates of heaven and that you about to pour out a blessing on my sisters and my brothers, even myself, God. Yes, you are, because I believe and I declare it and I prophesy a little right now today, God, that we're going to be able to handle it all. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. Enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm always bragging about you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory. Hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. But let Jesus know that you can't thank him enough. Can I talk to you today, my brothers? Can I talk to you today, my sisters? I want to talk to I want to talk to you today about do you really really know who you are? Now a lot of y'all right now today the first thing you can say oh I know who I am, and if you know who you are then what is your purpose? What is your gift? If you don't know that you don't know who you are, and it's okay to be honest, and it's okay to keep it real. Say I don't know. You ain't got to have too much pride say, oh, I know I am. You ain't got to walk with your chest all puffed out thinking that you know who you are when the whole time you don't know who you are. There's no shame admitting today that you don't know who you are. It's okay. God already understands because at one point in my life, my brothers and my sisters, I can admit and say I didn't know who I was for a long time. And I consider myself a grown man. How do I consider myself a grown man when I didn't even know who I was? How can I consider myself a grown man when I didn't know what my purpose was? How can I consider myself a grown man when I didn't know what my gift was? How can I consider myself a grown man when I ain't had no relationship with Jesus? I ain't had no commitment with Jesus. I ain't had no dedicated no dedication to Jesus. Only time I want to talk to him when I was in need of something. The only time I want to talk to him when I got in trouble. The only time I want to talk to him when I needed help. And when he came through and he provided, he knew I was going to take off. And still, when, they, when he came through and I took off, I still, good God Almighty, didn't know who I was. I was lost. Didn't know where I was. I was too busy chasing things in the world. But the word of God said he overcame the world. He conquered the world. I was chasing the wind, but the wind was not chasing me. I was gone, didn't know why I was coming back. I was lost out there because I can honestly say I didn't know who I was. But all that turned around at age 33. Now I'm 43. So for 10 years, now I know who I am. So yes, I can be brave. And yes, and I can admit to you today, my brothers and sisters, for quite some time, LT did not know who he was at all. But when I understand who Jesus was, when I made it my business, when I made it my priority to put him in first place, to have a relationship with Jesus, 
to be committed with him, to be dedicated with him, to pick up my cross and follow him. I dropped everything behind just to follow Jesus. And when I did that, he started showing me things. He started enlightening me and he started showing me who I was. And when I realized who I was, I took a running for a minute, for a minute because I said, no, God, this can't be me. Now all the dirt and the trouble I got into, he said, son, this is you. That was the old you that was in the world. But this is the new you that's with me. When I understood who I was, I understand. And I understood who servant Minister LT was. So I want to talk to somebody today. I want to preach to somebody today. Do you know who you are? And if you don't, this word is for you. This word is going to help you understand why you don't know who you are and why, why it's so important that you need to know who you are at the end of the day. And I believe and I declare today that someone, somebody, is going to know exactly who they are today because they're going to stop chasing things in the world. They're going to stop chasing the wind. I believe and I declare today that someone is going to have and want a relationship with Jesus. I believe and I declare right now today that someone is going to drop everything down and follow Jesus. I believe and I declare right now today that someone is going to pick up their crosses and they want to follow Jesus. They want to be close to Jesus. They want to seek him. Their heart want to be close to his heart. And I believe that's going to happen today through this word and through this message. Amen. Amen. Can we please turn our Bible to Matthew 16? And we're going to read verse 13. That's Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to read verse 13. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When Jesus came to this region of Gethsemane, Philippi, he asked the disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter asked, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for this was not revealed to you by man. But by my Father in heaven, hallelujah. I'm going to stop right there. I want to see how Jesus broke it down. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man. Man cannot reveal to you who you are. Man cannot reveal to you what is your gift. Man cannot reveal to you to let you know what God wants out of life out of you. Man cannot tell you what God is up to, but only the Father can reveal to you who you are, what is your gift is, and what God wants you to do in life. Only the Father in heaven can do that. And if the Father in heaven have not told you yet, that means you do not know who you are. That's why this word that's why this message today is so important to my brothers and to my sisters today. Do you really know who you are? And I'm going to tell you right now today, a lot of you right now today, you do not know who you are. Because the Father has not told you or shown you who you are. He has not revealed it to who you are. Because a lot of you right now today, keep it real and be honest, you don't have a 100% relationship with Jesus. You're not committed to him. You're not dedicated to him. So if you don't have a relationship with the son, if you're not committed to the son, if you're not dedicated to the son, if you're not picking your cross to follow the son, if you didn't drop everything, drop everything down to follow the son, how in the world do you know who you are? You can't. Because the word of God says it right here. He said, but my father in heaven, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of the Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you whatever you bind on earth 
will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Mm. Simon Peter, you are the Christ of the Son of the living God. But my Father in heaven told him that for a long time, like I said. I didn't know who I was. I was lost. I was too busy chasing things in the world. Too busy worrying about what other people going to think and say about me. Too busy thinking, worrying about how other people going to how, how other people going to feel about me. Then realize that my God has already conquered everything in the world. He overcame it. I was too busy chasing things. Chasing the girls. Chasing money. Chasing fast things. Chasing material things. None of that ever mattered to God. I wasted a lot of time doing things I shouldn't have been doing in the first place. But all that changed the moment when I asked God for help. All that changed the moment when I asked God for a favor. And he removed me from one city and state to another city and state. And I'm going to keep it real with you, my brothers and my sisters. In the moment I moved to Georgia, I was still having my Charlotte ways. I was still wanting to drink. I was still wanting to get high. I was still wanting to party. I was still wanting to curse. I was still wanting to act a fool. I was still wanting to act a nut because it was still in me. I was still chasing things. I still didn't know who I was. I was still lost. I still didn't realize that Jesus has already conquered the world. I, didn't, I knew about Jesus, but I didn't understand him. And that's what some of y'all are going through. You might, have, you might know about him, but you don't understand him. You might have heard about him, but you don't have a relationship with him. So there's a difference in that. And he talked to me one day. And he said, son, I didn't bring you down here to Georgia to continue to be a fool. For you continue to be a nut. I didn't bring you down here to joy so you continue to, to get high and drink and curse and, and still want to party and have and chase things in the world. I brought you down here so I can show you who you are. Do you really want to know who you are? In the moment that he said it, I said, Father, I want to know who I am. And he said, son, are you sure? And I said, Father, I'm sure. This time, if I was never by sure about anything else, Jesus, I'm for sure right now today. I want to know who I am and what you want me to do and who I am and what you want me to be. And he revealed it to me. And the moment that he revealed it to me, the moment that he showed it to me, I did it like the same thing that Jonah did. I took our run. I said, there's no way. That's me. I said, God, you got to be tripping on something. I said, God, there's no way that you want me to minister your word. He said, son, that's what exactly what it is. So when he showed it to me again, I said, and I questioned him. I said, God, is this really real? Is this really what you want me to do? Is this really what my calling is? Is this really what my gift is? Is this really what you put in my heart to do and be? He said, son, I don't make mistakes. And I don't change my mind. Good God Almighty. So when he showed it to me again, I said, okay, God, what you want me to do? He said, I want you to pick up your cross and follow me. I pick up my cross and start following Jesus. He said, now once you start getting the word, I want you to start making your prayer a prayer habit. So I started making my prayer a prayer habit. I said, okay, God, what's next? He said, son, now I want you to pick up the word and start reading my word each and every day. I want this word to fill you up each and every day. And the more I kept praying, the more I kept getting to the word, the more I kept knowing who I was. It didn't happen overnight. It took some time. Because God wanted to make sure I was not going to take off and run again. But he knew this time I was not going to run again because I, I wanted to know who I was. I thought I knew who I was when I was in the world. I thought I knew who I was when I was out there in the streets. I thought I knew who I was when I was out there clubbing and doing all kinds of wicked, wicked things. But I didn't know who I was. The moment God started showing it, and the moment that God started revealing to me, then I knew who I was. And when I knew who I was, other people noticed who I was. So if other people not noticing who you are, 
That means that you don't even know who you are. Yet. So my question to you today, my sisters, my question to you today, my brothers, do you really want to know who you really are? And it's not, it's not a problem if you don't know. You don't have to be shame about it. You ain't got to tell me about it. You can just listen to this word, listen to this message that God is talking about. And once you get done listening to it, you can say, God, I don't know who I am. God, I'm lost. God, I've been lost for quite some time. God, I'm still chasing things in the world. God, I'm afraid what other people are going to think or say about me. Father God, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to even know who I am. But God don't want you to be afraid to know who you really are. He wants you to know who you are. That's why he created you for. That's why he blessed and gave everybody a gift. A gift that you didn't have to pray for. A gift that you didn't have to sow a seed for. A gift that's already was already implanted inside of you. And the reason why a lot of y'all know what y'all gift is, and you know what your purpose is, is because you don't know who you are. And the reason why you know you don't know what your gift is, and you don't know what your purpose is, is because you don't know who Jesus is. It's because you don't have no relationship with Jesus. You're not committed to him. You're not dedicated to him. I ain't talking about because you want something. I ain't talking about because you ain't got in trouble or you need anything. We all know Jesus then. That's the number one person we go to when we get in trouble. That's the number one person we go to when we need some help. That's the number one person we go to when we need. And the moment that we get what we get, what we do, we take off. And we still don't know it. We still don't know who we is. And we still don't know who we are again. And guess what happened at the end of the day? We still lost. We still back in the same puddle. We still making the same mistakes again. Are you willing to stop making those same mistakes today? Are you willing to stop chasing things in the world today? Are you willing to stop chasing, chasing the wind right now today? Are you willing? To devote your life to Jesus today? Are you willing to open up your heart to Jesus today? Are you willing to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus today? Are you willing to drop everything down? I mean drop everything. I mean leave your mother, your father, your sister, your brothers, your children, your job, everything behind to follow Jesus today. Are you willing to do that? I know some of y'all say, man, that's a hard pill to swallow. I thought Jesus was first place in your life. I thought Jesus was the love of your life. And if Jesus is really the love of your life, and if Jesus is your everything, it shouldn't be a hard pill to swallow. It shouldn't be nothing to figure out. You should say, you know what? I'm dropping everything down because I want to follow Jesus. I'm going to pick up my cross because I want to follow Jesus. And the more that you follow Jesus, then you're going to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, that means you are not following Jesus at all. And that's what this word is talking about and what this text is talking about. But Simon, Peter knew who Jesus was. The reason why he knew who he was is because he dropped everything down to follow Jesus. He had a relationship with Jesus. He was committed to Jesus. He was dedicated to Jesus. He knew who he was because he had the understanding. But Jesus, he didn't know who he was at first, but when he dropped everything down, when he gave his life to Jesus, and he'd been, he been walking with the number one man. When you walk with the number one man in your life, yes, you're going to know who you are. And yes, other people are going to know who you are because it is Jesus, good God Almighty, that is living and shining through you. And when it's Jesus is living and shining through you, people are going to know who you are. They ain't got a second guess who you are. They're going to know because you're going to shine so bright you're going to be so radiant, they're going to know that you're a woman of God. They're going to know that you're a man of God. So I know who I am. Do you know who you are today? It's time for y'all to confess that right now. It's time for y'all to keep it real right now. And it's time for you to be honest right now today. Do you really know who you are right now today? And if you lost right now today, can I please pray with you? All you got to say, Lord Jesus, please come into my life. Take over right now today. Father God, I want to give my heart to you right now today. I want to be committed to you right now today. I want to be dedicated to you right now today. I want to know who I am right now today. Because Jesus, I've been lost. I've been chasing things in the world. When I know now that you have overcome and conquered the world. Jesus, 
I don't know. I want to know who I am. But I've been afraid and I'm worried about what other people might think and say about me. And Jesus is telling me to tell you right now today, don't worry about what other people are going to think and say about you. Nobody's opinion matters but what my opinion is. I'm your father. I'm your hero. I'm your protector. And I believe right now today, while you pray that simple little prayer, that you have come into a relationship and a commitment and a dedication and you want to have a bond with Jesus today. And if this word is for you, and you know this word is for you, give God some thanks right now. Give God some praise right now. And give God some glory right now today. I believe and I declare it after this service is over with. A lot of people today is going to pick up their cross and follow Jesus. I believe and I declare right now today that a lot of people are going to drop everything down to follow Jesus. I believe and I declare right now today after this service is over with. A lot of people are going to come out and say, Jesus, I don't know who I am. But I want to know who I am. Jesus, can you help me with this? And Jesus told me. I'm going to help my sons. I'm going to help my daughters. Because it's okay to admit that you lost. It's okay to admit, to let, let, let Jesus know that you don't know who you are. Because he already know. If I, can, if I can admit it and be bold with it, you can too. There's no shame to it. Admitting it right now today. Amen. He please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life. To guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today by us praying that simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always put him first place. Always continue to trust him. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus no matter what. Always continue to choose faith over fear, my brothers and sisters. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. I just ask y'all guys to continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. This is serving minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name. God bless you. Amen.